Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following example. Determine if whether the following expressions are vectors, scalar, or meaningless. Now before we start with part A, think about the general cases. Once you have those tools in your toolbox, then all four parts, A, B, C, and D, will be fairly straightforward. So again, you can write this down on a piece of paper. Here we go. Now, you can even draw a table or compose a table with two different columns. So the second column, we can call this meaningless. And in the first column, these are the ones which equals to either a scalar outcome or a vector outcome. So again, we're going to let S equal to some scalar outcome, V be some vector outcome. And again, in the first co uh, column, either the answer is going to be a scalar or a vector outcome. So case number one, if you take some scalar outcome and you multiply this with another scalar outcome, this will give you a scalar outcome. For example, five times seven, that's going to be 35, just like that. Case number two, if you take a scalar outcome and you multiply this with a vector outcome, this will give you a vector outcome. For example, five times vector A is still going to be a vector outcome. Case number three, if you take a vector and you cross another vector, this would give you a vector outcome. So again, by definition, the cross product of two vectors, it's going to be a vector. Case number four, if you take the dot product of two vectors, so for example, V dotted into another vector V, this would give you a scalar outcome. Case number five, if you are adding two vectors, so again, some vector plus another vector, of course, this will still be a scalar or, I mean, a vector outcome, or if you take a vector minus another vector, of course, that is still going to be a vector outcome. Now, if you move on to the second column, when is this going to be meaningless? For example, you could take a vector and you multiply by another vector. And again, I'm going to let M equal to meaningless. So this is going to be meaningless. If you take a scalar and you dot it to another scalar, that's also going to be meaningless. So for example, you cannot say five dot into five. You could say five times five. That's okay. That's 25, but you cannot take five dot it into five. Or you can look at the cross product of a scalar and a vector. And again, in this case, this is going to be meaningless. Or you can take the cross product of two scalar outcomes. Again, that's going to be meaningless. So you cannot take five cross five. That's going to have no meaning. Last but not least, you can take the dot product between a scalar and a vector. And again, this is going to be meaningless. Now that you have the major concepts, we're now ready to look at part A, B, C, and D. Part A, vector u plus vector v in brackets dotted to vector u minus vector w. So if you look at the first part, the sum of two vectors is going to be a vector. And if you look at the second part, vector u minus vector w, that is still going to be a vector. And of course, the dot product of two vectors equals to a scalar outcome. So let me just highlight this so you can see the idea from this side. Part B, vector u dotted to vector v in brackets times vector w cross in brackets vector u cross vector w all over the magnitude of vector w. So again, in the first part, if you take the dot product of two vectors, that's going to be a scalar outcome. The second part is going to be a scalar multiplied by a vector, which is still going to be a vector outcome. If you look at this bracket right here, vector u cross vector w, that's still going to be a vector outcome. And of course, if you cross two vectors, that is still going to be a vector outcome. And a vector divided by the magnitude, meaning you're dividing it by a scalar outcome, this is still going to be a vector outcome. Again, let's highlight this last part so you can see the correlation. A scalar 
times a vector, there's still going to be a vector outcome. Now, I would like you to press pause, try part C and D, and when you press play again, I'll be here. Part C, vector u cross vector w in brackets minus vector u dotted to vector w. Again, if you think about the cross product of two vectors, that's going to give you a vector. If you think about the dot product of two vectors, that's going to be a scalar. Again, when you try to take a vector minus a scalar, this is going to be meaningless. So let's add this onto the list. So if you take a vector minus a scalar, that's going to be meaningless. And of course, if you take a vector plus a scalar, likewise, that's going to be meaningless as well. Let's relate this by highlighting part C just like that. Part D, the dot product of vector u and v plus vector w dotted into, in brackets, vector u cross vector v all over the magnitude of vector w. Again, if you take the dot product of two vectors, that's going to be a scalar outcome. Plus, if you start with the brackets, vector u cross vector v, that's going to be a vector outcome. And then you take vector w dotted to a vector. So again, the dot product of two vectors will be a scalar. You're adding two scalars, which is going to be a scalar. And you're dividing it by the magnitude, which is still going to be a scalar. So again, in this case, the final answer is going to be scalar. So one more time, if I take the fourth color, the correlation you want to make is this. When you take a scalar times a scalar, that's going to be a scalar. And of course, when we say multiply, you can also multiply by a fraction. So really, multiplying and dividing, it's all collapsed into this scalar times scalar equal to scalar statement. I hope this makes sense.